Thanks. I appreciate it. Good morning, everybody. Uh, what a great week it's been here in San Diego. I want to thank Mark Neville and everyone uh, from the Holiday Bowl. It's been absolutely spectacular for our families, for our young men, and for our entire football program. I want to especially say thank you to all the Redcoats, you know, all the great volunteers that make, I think, bowls special. And uh, for our young men, our football program, to be able to come out here and experience an unbelievable first-class uh, bowl experience in San Diego has been absolutely amazing. Again, I want to congratulate Coach Witt and, and the Utah Utes on an outstanding season. You know, as you prepare for a team, uh, especially in the opener or a bowl game, you've got an extended period of time to, to watch their video. And uh, just so impressive, number one, fundamentally. Schematically, they put a lot of pressure on you. They're so physical and tough. They're well-coordinated and play well together. And then, you know, you got to tip your hat, obviously, to the entire staff and their program for the way that they've been able to develop depth, the adversity that they've overcome. Uh, has been incredibly impressive to watch. So we know we're going to have our hands full tomorrow afternoon uh, and tomorrow evening. Uh, I think our guys have prepared well. They've enjoyed uh, the, the time in San Diego when it's been time to enjoy it, but they've been very focused, very disciplined, and uh, very locked in when it's time to meet and practice. So, again, thank you to Mark. Thank you to all the Redcoats. We greatly appreciate just a first-class experience here in San Diego. And uh, one of the highlights, without a doubt, was uh, going on, going on uh, the Theodore Roosevelt. That was a special, special opportunity for us. And I know our guys absolutely loved it. And, and uh, to all of our military uh, stationed here in San Diego and the greater Southern California area, thank you for your sacrifice and service. We greatly appreciate all that you do for us and for our freedom. So with that, any questions I may answer? Go ahead, fire away. Rod Zundel, KSL, Salt Lake City. What have you noticed looking over the tape of uh, Kyle's team and and exactly what you guys uh, are planning on and that you could see out of those uh, videos? Uh, well, from a you know, film standpoint, like I said earlier, you know, tough, physical, well-coordinated, great depth. You know, we're very similar from a standpoint that both teams have overcome a ton of adversity from injuries. Uh, and, and to see the way that younger guys stepped up on, on their tape, it just as you continue to watch, they just kept getting better and better. And the way that they finished, the way that they fight back to come back to win games down the stretch, uh, you know, and there's a reason why, you know, they, they played in the PAC championship. You know, they, they were outstanding, outstanding season. And, uh, you know, we're going to have our hands full as far as schematics. This is probably our first time dealing with each other, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, good try. No, that's not going to happen. Uh, the guys from Chicago that know me well, that's one thing I don't talk about. But, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, quite frankly, I think in any bowl game, it's ABCs and one, two, threes. You know, it's, it's, it's elementary football. You know, you got to get up to the speed of the game. You, you got to execute fundamentally and execute what you're doing, and you got to play clean. It's it's really not any more complicated than that. Yeah, Jeff Ryan here with Fox 13 in Salt Lake City. Do you see a lot of similarities in your style of play, defensive, you know, minded teams that like to run the football? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of similarities there, Jeff. When you look at, uh, you know, I think both of us, I think, have neck roll in our blood. You know, we're both linebackers and, uh, you know, want to play the game the right way. And, uh, you know, usually it's a line of scrimmage uh, type game when you play teams like us, and uh, especially in our league. It's something that we've had to definitely improve on in my 13 years. We've had to improve at the line of scrimmage, and I think we're gaining on that. We're still not where we want to be as a program, uh, but we're gaining on where we want to be from a line of scrimmage standpoint. But... Uh, schematics were a little bit different, uh, but I think from the way that we play, we're, we're very, very similar. Dave at WGN in Chicago. Uh, Pat, what have been the, the common denominators for you in winning these three bowl games in the last four years? Well, we've had a f you know, fourth quarter battles. You know, they've gone all the way down to the wire. Um, you know, we've, we've found a way to get it done. It, they've not necessarily been very pretty. Uh, you know, we've made plenty of mistakes that happens uh, in the postseason when you've had this much time off. But uh, we, we found a way to win. We just kept battling. And, uh, you know, we've played some pretty darn good teams. And, again, here we go again. You know, I think this is my ninth bowl game, and we're nine for nine being underdogs. So uh, it's nothing new to us, uh, you know, from a standpoint of the teams that we're playing, the quality teams we're playing, the quality coaching talent uh, that we're playing. So, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll execute cleanly and make it, make it a game that we can compete in. You know, as you look at the games that have led up to, you know, really tomorrow, uh, you know, early on the games were kind of, uh, I think, a little bit cleaner. Uh, and as, as time has gone on through bowl season, you've seen more turnovers. Uh, you've seen defenses play, I think, at, at times a little bit better 
Uh, and then at other times, you've seen t defenses play really poorly. It's kind of been like Jekyll or Hyde as you watch teams play. So, uh, you know, layoff is a little bit of a challenge, especially, uh, you know, from a standpoint of the team speed that they have and the schematics that they, they present for us is going to be definitely challenging. But, again, hopefully we'll play clean and, and play well. Coach Lynn Harrington with Stay Alive and Power 5. Uh, your quarterback, Clayton Thorson, understand like he's been going through injuries throughout the year. With all this month, you know, time to prepare, what percentage is he at now entering the holiday ball? Yeah, you know, I think Clayton, uh, it's well documented what he went through. You know, a year ago at this time, obviously went through a devastating injury uh, in the Music City Bowl. And there were a lot of questions whether or not he'd even be able to play this year, let alone start in the opener. And, uh, you know, now this is going to be his, I believe, 52nd uh, consecutive start, 53rd maybe. Uh, that's obviously unmatched uh, in our in our program in the Big Ten's history. So that durability, that toughness, uh, you know, is, is unmatched uh, from a standpoint of the quarterback play. But he's been a, he's been a warrior. You know, we're just so proud and so thankful for him. He's been through a lot. You know, it's interesting. It's you know people that follow our program. You know, here's a guy that is the all-time winningest quarterback in program history. He's taken us now to four straight bowl games, led us to the Big Ten championship game, led us here to the Holiday Bowl, and it's you know. Outside of our program, I'm not sure a whole lot of people know about who he is. So the NFL knows, you know, and he obviously uh, be going to the Senior Bowl uh, coming up, and and uh, and then uh, you know obviously a lot of things after that. Uh, but just so thankful for him. You know, he's a young man that we've watched. Wow, since he was a sophomore in high school, you know, and now you you go through that whole process uh, and to see where he's at now, married, ready for the NFL, ready for life. Uh, we're just so thankful for him, and, and uh, he's just been such a great leader for us. We're very proud of him. Uh, Kurt Cragthorpe, Salt Lake Tribune. Hi, Kurt. Pat, uh, coming as close as you did to the Big Ten Championship, and even as nice as everything is with the Holiday Bowl, do you have any Rose Bowl remorse this month? Absolutely not, no. Um, you know, we, you, you get what you earn, and we earned the privilege to go to the Big Ten Championship. Uh, you know, we earned our way back into that game. We did not play very well uh, early, and um, you know the score reflected that. I thought we settled down at halftime, and I thought the guys refocused, re-energized, and, and recommitted to the plan, and uh, came out of the, the you know third quarter, and we put ourselves in position. There's less than ten minutes left in the game, and it's a three-point game, and then we again made mistakes. Uh, I would also like to credit this team called Ohio State. Uh, they're pretty freaking good, you know. And when you're out there, like, look at that dude. Woo. Wow, look at that dude, you know, and then how are we going to cover that guy? And then they ran the ball, and then Haskins ran the ball, you know, and then the game was over. So I shook Urban's hand and congratulate him. Little did I know that he was going to be retiring, but uh, that was an outstanding football team, and one that I said afterwards, and, I, and I, I believe it, even now after yesterday, I think deserved to be in the Final Four, uh, you know, from a talent standpoint, from a scheme standpoint, and obviously uh, from the way they were playing the last couple weeks. And so... You know, my hope is we revisit that. You know, we, uh, when we initially were told what the playoff was going to be, at least in our league as coaches, it was going to go to conference champions, it was going to go to teams with strength of schedule, and it was going to go to the best four teams when we got to the end of the season. You know, I think two of those teams made a statement last night. There's no doubt about that. That was pretty impressive to watch. Um, but, you know, I think that's a goal of – I don't want to speak for coach, but that's a goal of ours. We want to get our program to that point. Uh, and to be one win away from you know winning the Big Ten championship and really about nine minutes away is incredibly motivating. So when I look at the month, no, it's been a motivating month. Uh, and then once we obviously walk off the field tomorrow, now my whole sole focus will go, what do we need to do this year to take the next step in the offseason? And uh, you know we did a full program evaluation last year like we have every offseason. We made some tweaks, made some changes, and then we went out to start the season and what we were one and three. So great job in the offseason study. That worked out really well. So... <laughs> We're going to change it up this year, and maybe we won't study anything. Maybe we'll just go play some golf. I don't know. But uh, it was a miserable start, but it's an honor to be here. Josh Furlong, KSL.com. Hey, Josh. When, when you go up against a coach like Kyle Whittingham, who's, who's got an 11-1 and record in bowl, um, bowls, does that change your approach, or, or, or what kind of, of mentality do you go to knowing, knowing his record? Yeah, I prayed a lot, you know. Um, I was hoping Coach would share his plan. He hasn't yet, so maybe after the game he will. Uh, you know, you just tip your head. I mean, he's a coach's coach. He's one of the best. He's a pro's pro. He's, you know, we've known each other now for a number of years. Uh, as, as Kevin has invited us uh, through Under Armour, his head coaches, to get together. And it's been just great and, and fun to watch from afar 
the job that Coach Wood has done. And, you know, you look at the guys that he's developed to go on to play on Sunday, you know, now lead this program to a championship level uh, and, and been really close just like us a number of years. Uh, it, it's uh, impressive to watch. So I'll be a huge fan in every game, but obviously tomorrow afternoon. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of those that's uh, it's been really impressive to watch. Cole Paxton, Daily Northwestern. Coach, I'll ask the elephant in the room question. A lot of rumors flying around today about Green Bay Packers having interest in you. Anything you want to say on about, that front? About me? Yes. Oh, really? Sure, it's not Kyle? It, it was you. <laughs> I, well, I, you know, I thought Teddy Greenstein reported that over a month ago. So I'll, uh, I'll reiterate my, my stance when I said to him a month ago. I don't talk about rumors, number one, and hashtag go cats. How does that sound? Hey, Coach Adam Hogue, WGN. Hello, Adam. Uh, these bowl games, you got you got a couple seniors on defense that that are going to be sitting out because of because of injuries. And Thanks for the reminder, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate I, it. I'm just curious how sometimes you, you can use these games as a Kickstarter to next year too by getting younger guys playing. Um, and has the red shirt rule this year changed any of that in, in terms of that approach into this bowl game? Yeah, absolutely, it has without a doubt. Uh, you know, I think that's one of the best rules that have we, we've been working on that now as a board of trustees for a number of years. You know, Todd Berry, who leads our association, was finally able to work with the NCAA to get that rule passed, and it just makes so much sense to give us the opportunity and the flexibility to have our entire roster. We're going to manage it better next year than we did this year. We learned a lot this year as we went through it. Uh, probably played a couple of guys too much early uh, that, that uh, limited our ability to play them later in the year, and so we'll learn from that experience. And now as we've gotten to the end, we've got a little bit of flexibility with some guys you know, as we went through the year that we've been able to use, especially in the kicking game. You know, we had a handful of freshmen make plays in the Big Ten championship game that had not played in a college game, and now they're out there covering kicks. And so that, that would be – that's key for us, you know, as a developmental program, to have the ability to have our entire roster is critically important. Uh, so very thankful for that rule change. Uh, I hope that we'll be better at it in the future. And, uh, you know, definitely going to have an opportunity to have some guys play uh, tomorrow night that – you know, again, is it game three? Is it game two? Is it their first game? Is it game four? But then protect their red shirt. And, you know, again, that, that's a beautiful thing about our place, you know, to have the number one graduation rate in the country. You know, I mean, we had a 3 2 GPA this quarter, 80 guys of our 108 over a 3.0. I mean, these guys are studs in the classroom. And then to lead us to a championship is spectacular. But you, you fast forward that now, four years from now, that gives those guys that red shirted an opportunity to go to graduate school at our place. And last year, we set a national record with the number of guys in Greg. In grad school this year, we got five guys in the Kellogg program. Uh, that, that, you know, you want to talk about being set for life. Um, so that's what it's all about. You know, using our game uh, to get the guys prepared for life, and and I think that that four four game rule is going to really impact a lot of guys in a positive way.